is the avenue we built back in May of, it's now uh, January 2012, and the oven's held up well. We've cooked, we showed cooking some pizza in it in May. Now we've cooked over 120 pizzas in this. We've cooked chicken a bunch of times, bread, cookies, pies, cake, all kinds of stuff. It works excellent. It's held up well. We put four and a half feet of chimney pipe up and pushed the fire in, took out the thermometer and put a pyrometer and we got it up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, turned it into a kiln and uh, works. Now they're waterproof and they'll hold up. Uh, we fired baking plates, we fired all kinds of different things. So it works well as a kiln and as an oven. Uh, we're just so happy with it. But that gave us, we wanted to continue that, you know, and then also I want to mention that we cooked also on the top of it as well. So it, it's really versatile. You can cook on the inside of it if you took out the the deflector plate underneath and the baking surface and you can cook on it just as a regular rocket stove. Just clean out the ashes with the machete easy, just slide that in and pull them out. So it just works well. And now we got a new idea that we're hoping to introduce. So now we've got three burners, rocket stove right here, and a rocket stove that's underneath this. Yeah, this is a molded pot skirt that we have here that's made to fit this big Haitian cooking pot. Uh, but we've also got, we can take this out and replace it with one that's made to fit a wok, to fit a canning kettle, to fit a teapot. It, it's quite versatile. Actually, one for fitting a griddle also. But we, this one that we didn't put it, we just left it flat on top. The griddle works really well right here. And uh, then we've got another oven right here, a smaller version of it. But this one has worked really well. We cooked the chicken and we boiled some beans down here and then we put the pot of beans here while we were baking the chicken and finished uh, simmering the beans right up on top. And uh, then the oven pulls right open. And then we've got a metal door on it with a piece of fired uh, insulated clay that we fired in the kiln and actually the, the baking surface that we have in here was uh, fired we fired these little pieces and, and fired this as well and, uh, it's just quite the happy little rocket kitchen and we'll show you how we made it and hopefully this will get made all around the world and make a difference because it just doesn't use that much wood and you get you don't have smoke blowing in your face as well. So the reason we even made this in the first place was we built this stove with this woman in Haiti and then we came back a week later and she hadn't used it even though the stove was ready because she didn't have a kitchen to use it in. And so we go across the road and here our friend Ed Nair has built a countertop and he's put stoves on top of it. We thought, what would happen if we embedded the stoves inside the countertop? And so then we came home and started building a stove, uh, build a counter to put stoves in it. And here's just pictures showing what we did step by step. We've got a Picasso album on our website that will show you and give details. So this is just pictures of the process. Three stoves. Um, and then there's going to be an oven at one end and we use cob to build it and uh, then we use some insulating clay for the oven part. We use a box for a form for the oven and had a interchangeable in the middle stove there's going to be interchangeable uh, stove tops and we put sand, use sand as the mold in the oven to that will support the roof that we put on and use a little rebar right in the front to hold that together. And there was, we got the oven top built. And, and then we, once it dries out a bit, we pull the sand out. And 
and we got this oven that we just dried down a little bit and we put in the top we put some uh, a deflector plate to keep the air from going out too quickly out of the oven but and I got a firing plate in and we put some rocks on top as pot supports and put a door on the oven hooked it up with a chain so that it could uh, be supported it started to sag a little bit so we put some boards to hold it in place put some staples in to hold the door in place and put some little handles on it we've got some ceramic ones drying out and we fired the thing up and here it is now we're using it frying anything takes a very very hot fire and the amount of wood that we have making this beautiful french fries is very small so this griddle could fit right on these rebar posts right here if we weren't using this but it also looks like it'll work quite well right here especially once we get this counter dried out the kamal has a reinforced bottom underneath it to keep to diffuse the heat so it doesn't get too hot right on the bottom and then right next the pot next to this actually has some french fries just about ready to take out of the pot backwards yeah. then the beans that are they're doing very well on the waste heat coming out the top of the oven well we have our new year's chicken french fries from the garden coming out of this wonderful rocket stove cooking pot no smoke all the smoke all the smoke from the fire beneath is coming out around the edge of this, of this pot. And it's not hurting my eyes. It's getting super hot. And that's good news. All right. Put some cheese on these guys. Caliente! And oh, with the smoke coming right out under the griddle, you can see the flame underneath. That nice particulate matter and carbon monoxide cleaned out. And there we have the rocket stove. A few sticks and a nice clean fire that's super hot. The New Year's Chicken. Beautiful. Oh man, oh man. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Hooray for the Rocket Kitchen! Now we're cooking in the Rocket Kitchen. Here we go. Twenty-five, twenty-five minutes later, what does it look like? Pull out the butter, it's ready to eat. My, they're tasty. Another triumph from the rocket oven. Woohoo! Smells wonderful.